Hi everybody, my name is Mark Stevenson. I am the marketing director for Cold SC and Coleman Company. So basically Don knows everything about DPG machines and Heath can use them and all I'm good for is making sure that when you go online or you go to a trade show or, or go anywhere that DTG is one of the names that pops up when you search or, uh, or recall. So uh, my job is, is just marketing. What I'm going to do today is uh, a couple things. I'm going to do introductions, and that's going to be a little bit different than what you might be used to. We're going to talk about location and location, uh, in person and, on and online, uh, keywords, random suggestions, things like that. So uh, this is who we are and what we do. I know you've been wandering around for a little bit, but just let me uh, put it down for you. We do t-shirt printing machines, the direct -to garment printers. Uh, when we look at what words people search for on the internet, like if somebody in your town looks for screen printed shirts or you know, they might look for embroidered polos, those words are very important. And what we found recently is that more people go to the internet and type in t-shirt printer mach printing machines than they do DTG printers or direct department printers, things like that. So now, as just part of today's lesson, uh, t-shirt printing machines is up there and not DTG printers. So that, that's one way we do it. We do rhinestone transfer systems, which is the CAMS machines, uh, commercial embroidery machines, of course, which is uh, our SWF, um, spangle transfer machines, which is new. Um, do you guys see the machines over in the corner? Uh, the new spangle machine is great. I'm just going to pass this around because it's really neat if you haven't seen spangles before because it's new um, and it's uh, a great new technology uh, that we've adopted, mostly because uh, it's like rhinestones, but it's uh, smooth. So you can wear it as performance wear, washes really well, and extremely profitable. Um, and of course we do supplies. We're attached to Coleman and Company, which is the office right over there. So Coleman and Company sells direct to garment printer inks. They sell the um, foils to make uh, your DTG prints a little bit more colorful. They also do embroidery thread, embroidery supplies, rhinestones, etc. So when we talk about introductions, uh, both in person and online, it's really uh, who you are and what you do. Whether it's on a website or Facebook or in person, that's, that's what the whole business is about. Um, most of the small businesses that I talk to, it's, it's word of mouth. You know, it's because someone knows who you are and what you do already, and they introduce you to somebody else. So that's a big deal. Um, and to be obvious about who you are and what you do, both online and in person. Okay, which I always am. I mean, who am I? I'm on all the videos out there. I'm director of marketing for Coldessi. It's the first thing I said when I met you guys. My name is Mark Stevenson, director of marketing for Coldessi. What do we do? We do t-shirt printing machines. We do rhinestone machines. And in person, you guys should be doing the same thing. You should be, hi, my name's Buck. I've got a screen printing business. I do, I specialize in sports team shirts. Here's my card. You know, it's that basic kind of thing that everybody needs to do. Little elevator speed. Little elevator pitch. That's exactly it. You know, it's, it's interesting because what I find is, is, is most people don't do that. Especially small businesses, you get into the business because you are creative, you're good at embroidering, um, you want to make some extra cash. So like Don said, you know, you run the machines, um, you can do the work properly, you can build properly and things like that, but most people are uncomfortable picking up the phone or walking into another business and saying, my name is this, this is, my, this is what I do for a living. Do you need anything? You know, it's as simple as that. Um, introductions, be obvious. Uh, this is a good one. It's a really great customer, customer of ours, First Amendment Tees. And they've got one of the, uh, an online t-shirt shop you know, that you can go and you can pick out the shirt and the design you want and put it together. They do a great job with that. But they started this other separate website just on contract DTG printing. So if you're not ready for a DTG printer, you know, you can call these guys up. They won't compete with your customers and they'll print a couple of shirts for you. They specialize in that. So when they did their website, how obvious were they? Looking to outsource your DTG printing. That is the main graphic on the website. We've got another uh, good customer um, that does rhinestones. The first paragraph is, is, hi, we do wholesale rhinestone transfers only. We'll sell you this many to this many. We have this many production heads. We only sell wholesale rhinestone transfers. 
So you're not going to go to the website and wonder who they are and what they do. And if you read a little further, they'll tell you the story about being a on a strawberry farm in Dover, Florida. You know, so you get you get the full picture. They're obvious about who they are and what they do. Especially if you've got a business name that's like Coldesi. I mean, what the hell does that mean? It doesn't mean anything, right? It doesn't say T-shirt printing machine company. Okay, uh, so we have to say, I'm from Coldesi Inc. What do we do? We sell these machines, these machines, and these machines for apparel decorators. So whether or not you're introducing yourself in person, you're doing the elevator pitch, just do it and be obvious. Customers have to be able to find you. I mean, that makes sense. So you have to be where your customers are. Uh, we've got one, uh, I told somebody the story, we had a uh, receptionist out here, had a little embroidery business on the side and she was a receptionist. She ended up buying one of the little 1v2p rhinestone machines. And um, by the way, six months later about, she traded it in for one of the bigger machines and quit. So that's why she's no longer here. Uh, but her thing is dogs. She does dog rhinestone t-shirts. So where does she go to be where her customers are? She goes to dog shows. Every time there's a there's a pound or a pet show or anything along those lines, you know, she's there. She may not set up a booth, but she's got a shirt, you know, that says who she is and what she does, which, by the way, I noticed nobody here has. So another way to be obvious about who you are and what you do, obvious about who you are, is to, you know, wear, wear what you do. I mean, you guys are in the apparel decorating business. You know, it's so cheesy. Um, we have this uh, t-shirt that's got a blonde girl with a sword, katana. And we like to rhinestone it at shows and things like that. It says DTG printers on there somewhere. And I was commenting in one of the texts. I says, yeah, I love that shirt. I've got one. He says, there's no way you wear that outside. I'm like, are you kidding? I walk every day, and half the time I'm in that shirt. And I just hope to God somebody stops me and says, you know, what, you know, What's the story? You're wearing rhinestones and, you know, I mean, I don't care what it is, right? I'm in marketing. This is what I do. So, I mean, really, that's what you do. Because you could have, you could buy an M4 and spend $40,000 and hire two guys to run it and steal heat from us to be this great artist. You could all sit in a room and produce amazing stuff. And if nobody ever finds you, then you're, you're going to go out of business. Okay? So, this is all part of that. So, be where your customers are. Um, that can make can make a big difference. Say who you are and what you do, and I did this specifically for Kim. Hi, my name is whatever. I make amazing customized those designs for t-shirts and party cards. Should be a natural first thing out of your mouth kind of thing. Wear what you do, of course. Um, I'm sorry, I should have started like this. Does anybody have too much business here? Or is that, like everybody's usually looking for a little bit more business? Um, so these are, these are things to help, help you get there. And this is usually the tough one uh, when I talk about network. Okay, so when most people think about not computer networking, people networking, they think about the uh, you know the guys in the ties and they sell coffee machines and they're have their business cards and they all sit down at the table and pass out cards. Okay, um, yeah, I mean that's great because I guarantee if you join a meetup group for entrepreneurs or if you go to a LinkedIn, you know session that happens to be in your town or you just go to a chamber of commerce meeting, nine times out of ten, you're going to be the only person in that group that prints t-shirts or borders out on polos or, or things like that. Because it seems like there are a lot of us out there, but any group of a hundred people, there's not. So if you are the person that's obvious and where your customers are, then, then you'll do better. Um, but you have to say what you are, what you do, you have to wear what you do. Networking is what I suggest is Look at meetups. Um, look at um, look at LinkedIn. Uh, look at Chamber of Commerce meetings. Go to church socials. Um, crash family reunions. You know anything that you can do where you can wear your shirt and have a business card and just naturally meet people. And it's it's really simple after you do it a few times. I mean it really is. And networking also means among your peers because I guarantee that. Within a month, somebody in this room is going to say, man, you know, i got somebody that called me about embroidery designs and I only do screen. Or I've got somebody that I've got, you know, an order for 57 shirts and I ran out of ink. Is there somebody else close by that I know, you know, that I can run over and just, and just do it? I mean, there's a lot of opportunity for you guys to 
network with each other and make some money. Um, my friends at um, First Amendment Tees and their contract DTG business. That's how that started. They had a great website and they got a lot of retail business. They started getting calls from people with DTG printers that couldn't handle the, all their orders. So they needed some place to go, so they set up a separate website. So networking among your peers is a, is a big deal. And, and MAMPAP is my own invention. That's meet as many people as possible. Okay. Um, why is that important? If 10% of your business is word of mouth, if 20% of your business, if 80% of your business is word of mouth, and you knew twice as many people, that is twice as much business. And that's easy to do. Just put yourself in those situations where you'll where you'll meet more people. Okay, more people who know, the more business you will get. You need as many people as possible. So you're saying that's online and offline. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, right now we're talking about uh, offline uh, because it's definitely it's actually kind of an easier process um, offline because you don't have to put up your website and wait for people to find you. You know, you can actually just hop in the car and go meet people. No, that, that's not, not hard. Yeah. So how are you found online? Um, okay, so how many people work out of their homes? Okay, cool. So there is, there is something called <laughs> Google Places for Business. Google Places for Business is when you search for something, like I search for Tampa custom shirts there. Let's see if I did this right. Okay, so when I search for Tampa custom shirts, I am in Tampa. So you see, I've got all these beige listings. Somebody is writing a check for those. Okay, so every time you click on one of those, you're costing somebody money. So if you don't like that person, just sit there all day and click on it. It costs them a lot of money. Okay, if it's your competitor, so wonder what's going on. <laughs> Not, did not really mean that at all. So um, for Tampa Custom T-shirts, okay, so this, this is great. Custom Inc., anybody know who they are? They are like in Virginia or someplace. They are not in Tampa. Uh, Tampa Shirts is in Tampa. They're one of our customers. Big Top Shirts, that's great. These listings right here with the ABC and the um, address next to them, those are Google Places for Business. So you can do this and it's a free listing. So not always, I mean, maybe in your place, if you go to Fort Lauderdale custom t-shirts, those spaces, because there's only a certain number, are probably full. But you should still fill out the Google Play, and you can just type in Google Places, and there'll be a spot for you to sign up an account. Okay. Fill out all the information on it, and what it'll do is, when somebody is sitting at their computer and they're looking for custom t-shirts or they want to do embroidery, the first things that shows up, Google sees where they are. And they pop up that little map in the corner of the closest places. You've done that, right? If you type in pizza, it shows you the nearest places to you, right? So why, why isn't it that way with custom t-shirts? So what you can do is you can get on the map, literally, just by doing the Google Places listing. Now there's also a great opportunity there because if you'll notice, See, there, there are these reviews. <coughs> so if you've got good customers, you can sign up on Google Places and just say, hey, I just signed up. You've got a Gmail address. Go and give me a good review. And, and if I look down the shirt, oh, I need, I'm looking for a custom t-shirt in Tampa. Let's see. Well, okay, these guys are pretty close to me. One review, two reviews, three reviews, done. I probably wouldn't even read it. Okay, so Google Places for Business is great and it's free. See. Yep, already talked about that. This is different than AdWords. Ad Absolutely. AdWords you pay for. It. Yeah. Yeah, you pay a lot of money for it. <laughs> pay a lot of money for it. I mean, I think a, a share is 250 250 a click. $2.50. I click. And 50 cents. I click. Yeah. Um, so we don't want that. Um, places for me. Google Places is great. Facebook. Now, again, you know, like Google Places, you're not going to show up on the first page if you're not one of those six or eight people that got there quickly. Um, Facebook. Anybody have a business Facebook page? Good. Okay. Um, Facebook is free. Everybody knows that, right? Um, and for some reason, Google likes Facebook as well. So, when you type in, for example, Tampa DTG printer, 
Tampa DVD <coughs> printer, you get all kinds of stuff. Like most of these people are actually in um, Tampa. Oh, by the way, there's Cold Essie. There's Cold Essie. This t shirt forms, but that's about Cold Essie. Here's one of our press releases. These are our pictures, which I'll talk about later. Way down at the bottom is, oh, look, it's one of our Facebook pages. Okay, so that was free. It's a relatively competitive term, right? And it works just like a website. So if you don't have a website and you don't want to mess with it, I understand it really doesn't matter, especially if you're a word of mouth kind of a person. Facebook, I don't care if you don't like it or don't use it or hate it or I don't want to be bothered or I don't care what my friends are doing from college, you know, that, that kind of thing. That's fine. Do a business Facebook page. Plug in all your information, put up a few pictures, and then forget about it. And eventually, it may crawl its way up to the first page. And if you don't have a um, website, at least you can put your business name, you can put your address, you can put your phone number, a few pictures of samples of stuff that you do, a description about what you do, and if there's anything going on, you can put that all on Facebook for free, you can put your Facebook address on a business card and say, hey, at least you don't have to answer that question, right? So, okay, so Tim. Hi, my name's Tim. I've got a t-shirt business. Great. What's your website address? You know, can I email you? Well, yeah, but, you know, here's my card. It's got my Facebook. Everything is there. You know, you can, you can use it just like a website. YouTube is my favorite. <laughs> we have, I think we're up to 330 videos on YouTube for Cold SE. Um, and we do that for a reason. So if you type in, it's my favorite one, custom t-shirt business marketing, <coughs> number two is the presentation that I did for our Rhinestone Open House, which is basically the same presentation that I just made a video of. I just turned the PowerPoint into video, and I put it on there, and it's on the first page of Google for this particular topic. Now, I went through and I searched a bunch of different uh, custom t-shirt related terms to <coughs> see what would look best, be the easiest explanation for you guys for all this stuff. And you know what I found was very few videos. Google likes to put um, a mix of things on the front page because 35% of that front page is advertisements. So that's why they put the Google map placements on there. That's why you'll see a line of pictures on there. They like to put different things on the front page because <coughs> it, it uh, provides us with more value. If you're you know, typing in cooking utensils, you might be looking for an article, but also it's cool to find a video. Okay? So that's how this one got on the front page. There are a lot of keywords in your area. If you go back and you do, let's say you do um, religious embroidery, faith-based embroidery. But when you type in faith-based embroidery in Google, there's no videos on the first page. Take your phone, point it at anything, name the video faith-based faith -based embroidery, and then fill in the description as much as possible that they allow you to do and put it up on YouTube. Link it to your Facebook page. And stuff like this will happen. There are whole businesses that do nothing but go to companies like yours and say, you know what, for $3,000, I'll shoot a video of your business and I'll put it online and you'll rank in Google. It's not the magic of the video or the production values or whether or not you think you look good or whether or not your shop is ugly. You know, it doesn't really matter. Put something up there with the keywords that you find <coughs> and, and you'll do better. You'll, you'll definitely do better. Because not only might you, might you um, show up on the first page, but you're going to put your, a link to your website or your Facebook page in there. And one of the ways that search engines like Google decide what, which results to show is uh, how many links go to that page. Because they figure, oh, if a lot of people are linking, you know, so you can click through to find that information, then it must be important. It must be useful. Because 500 people in the Miami area have clicked on this link in the past couple of months, that must really be useful. Let me move it up the search ranks a little bit because that's what people are looking for. So if you do your YouTube video, you put a link to your website, maybe they'll watch it and click on it and come see you. 
even if no one ever does, it's still good for your website or your Facebook page. Okay. And you track that by the amount of people that have gone through. Yeah. If you if you if you want to like if you want to track all the stuff, you can definitely use Google Analytics or YouTube has that available. But just from like a fundamental standpoint, um, it is going to work in the background. Whether or not you track how many people come to your website or whatever, that's mm -hmm. a completely different process. Right? For most people, if you just, you know, you'll you'll see the difference in the phone calls. You know, that'll that'll definitely happen. Okay, so that's YouTube. Pictures. Okay. I started with Yorkies because I live in the South Tampa area where like it's, you know, welcome to South Tampa, here's your Yorkie. You know, it's like that. Um, not me though. So I typed in custom Yorkie t-shirt. Now this really is pretty much only if you have a website. Okay, because what we're going to talk about is this little line right here. So remember I said Google likes different things. So on this page of custom Yorkie t-shirts, here I'll show you. I don't know why you would want, but just like, um, just like Don was saying, he used a much cooler example. The red 65 Mustang, which is exactly what I wanted. I mean, red 65 Mustang is very specific. Custom Yorkie t-shirts, very specific. Okay, so just so you know, if you look at the top here, somebody paid for all those. Okay, those are paid listings. That's paid. Zazzle, Cafe Press, these are the big guys. Another Cafe Press. Ca oh, look. T-shirts. Now, Zazzle and Cafe Press apparently almost have the, um, the market cornered on custom Yorkie t-shirts. But these are all pictures that belong to somebody's website. So Google went out and found the content that it liked. There aren't any videos about this. So if you put a Yorkie in a t-shirt and did a video, um, it would probably do really well. But this was free. So if you've got a website and you just put a picture of every job that you do, and you, you, um, there's a place where you put the title in and you put the tags in the background. And you just type in those words. Custom Yorkie t-shirt or Fort Lauderdale embroidery sample or you know whatever you decide applies to your business. Then you have a chance to show up. And again, it's free. Okay, and this is kind of what I was referring to is um, in the last couple of examples is keywords and phrases. Pick three or four and put them in everything that you do. What, what do you guys do? Do um, Blingware, we call it. Okay. Rhinestones and... Is there a particular market that you service or an area? Where are you located? Uh, we're here in Tampa. Okay. And, uh, so Tampa. We do this logo pretty much. Cool. So you could do um, South Tampa Rhinestone t-shirts, mm -hmm. South Tampa logo wear, um, custom South Tampa rhinestone stuff. Okay, so you pick three or four of those. If you are an embroiderer in Tallahassee, you know, it might be Tallahassee custom embroidery, it might be um, wholesale uniform embroidery, and then the name of your town. So whatever you pick, like so, and the way to the way to choose these things is sit down at the computer and try to find yourself. You know, what would you type in if you were looking for you? You know, okay, I'm in Tampa. I want to get a half dozen rhinestone T-shirts because I'm sponsoring a charity event. You know, maybe it's a, a brain cancer charity. So there's something going on with that in Tampa right now. Rhinestone charity T-shirts, Tampa. Well, if I type in rhinestone charity T-shirts and you've done Google Places for rhinestone t-shirts, then you're going to come up because you're close to me. Okay. If you have a picture of a t-shirt that you've done that is a rhinestone charity t-shirt and you put that on your website and you name it that, the picture might come up. If you do a video of you, hey, this is how to make a rhinestone charity t-shirt, do that and you tag it to go to your website, you might come up. So those are three ways that you can get found online for free, you know, that apply to you. What you've got to do first, though, before you start doing any of this, is just sit down and pick those phrases. How, how are people going to find you? you know, and by the way, 
they happen to be the same things that you're going to use to introduce yourself personally. Right? Hi, my name's John. I make rhinestone t-shirts in South Tampa. Hi, my name is Steve. I do custom printed dog shirts, mostly. But I'll do something special for you. So whatever whatever those words are, that's what, those are your phrases. Use them everywhere. Pictures, um, video descriptions. I didn't mention Google+. Plus. Um, it's like Facebook. Google has its own version of Facebook. Um, they'll try to get you to sign up for it when you do the Google Maps. It's another one of those things, just do it. Even if you never use it, it's just it's a free thing. Um, nobody really uses it every day, but everybody signs up for an account because Google loves it. So uh, you'll even see in some of the, when you go into places, some of them will even specify, oh, these people have a Google Plus page because Google likes them better. Um, so whenever you use it, just, just put it everywhere you are online. Um, okay. So there's a couple things that I didn't mention in the first part of the session that I want to make sure that I do because it's really important. Uh, you know that just sitting and staring at the phone is not going to make it rain. Okay. Nobody ever has enough business, uh, so you got to do something about that. If you're not ready to write somebody a check, and that's somebody a check to do a big website or to do AdWords for two hundred two dollars and fifty cents a click, or you know to, to buy a billboard. If you're not if you're not ready to do that kind of stuff, um, get in the car and go meet people. Uh, I had we've got a great customer. We've got a success story on online. One stop up in Newport Richie. Yeah. Crazy group of people. They're great. They have got a uh, kind of a, an off the street, on a busy road, retail shop. And they do DTG, they do rhinestones, they do vinyl, they do all kinds of stuff. First of all, their vehicle is covered in all of that. You can see them coming a mile away. <laughs> so, what is that? That's being places where your customer can see you. So when John or Lisa Lynn, when they go to the grocery store in the morning, they're driving that car. Because somebody in the parking lot is looking for a rhinestone t-shirt. Okay. The second thing they do is they've got rhinestone signage like crazy. So they actually did signs outside on the road out of rhinestones. So when people drive by at night, they don't even need lights. It just, it just lights up. But the biggest thing that gets them business is when there is nothing going on in the shop, John gets a stack of t-shirts that he's done and a stack of business cards and he just drives and pulls in and says, hey, my name's John, I own One Stop T-shirt shop down the road, we do custom t-shirts like this. Do you know anybody that needs that? I mean, that's not a, that's not a hard thing to say. You're not, at, you're not really breaking into somebody's day and saying, hey, can I speak to your manager today about your copy? No, you're not doing any of that. It's, hey, this, look. This is what I do. Just go in and hold up a shirt and hand him a business card. You know, if, if you can't do anything else. But just get in the car. Anything that you're doing on the computer that does not have to do with making a t-shirt or getting a check can wait until you've gone to see as many people as possible. And that, that will mean the biggest thing for business. <coughs> you know, hey, if you go to church, go to, go to two every Sunday. You know, just so you meet twice as many people. If you bowl, if you hunt, if you ski, whatever you do, wear the gear, carry the cards, have a sample here. Okay? And that will make you more money than, than any of this stuff will. Okay? But you still got to do all that stuff. Got to do, if you don't have a website, you should. If you're not going to do a website, just do a Facebook page. Okay? Um, one thing that I neglected to point out there is when you do any of this stuff online, Facebook, Google+, um, if you fill out any kind of directory information or anything like that, fill out every single thing with as many words as you can. So in other words, like if it says describe your business, screen print, no. Custom screen print business, we make custom screen printed t-shirts in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, for local businesses like this one, this one, this one, and charities, and and make and run out of words, run out of space, because Google's looking for all those words, and if you have them there, they're more likely to find you. Okay, it's a big pain because I do that all day. 
you know, and I write the same thing over and over all day, but you have to do it in every, every spot. Um, by the way, did I mention I had like 15 cups of coffee this morning? Mm -hmm. so, nope. um, any questions about any of that stuff? Okay. Um, if you get any questions, if you're at home, you know, what did that guy say? I'm filling out a Facebook profile. Um, I, you know, should I do AdWords? Should I, you know, do any of that stuff? Um, you're welcome to give me a call. Just, just give me a shout, and we'll talk about it. Uh, this presentation, one version is already recorded up online. You can find it in nine different places, <laughs> right? Because I want to be found everywhere. I want our business to be found everywhere. So whatever I do, I never do it in just one spot. I never just do a Twitter post. I always post it to Facebook and Google Plus and put it on the website and do a press release and talk to people about it on the street and at the grocery store and the dry cleaner and things like that. So if you guys do the same thing, I'm sure we'll see an increase in your business. Have you ever seen an example of a video that's been done from a DTG printer that created like like stood out in your head? Like is it something it's not a picture of, or a video of the store, but it's something like the Yorkie with the shirt on, like something that's you know, I, I haven't seen, I, I used to see some of those, but frankly, once we started doing the DTG printer videos, I can't find them anymore. Yeah. Because all I find is ours. <laughs> our, most, our, our most popular <coughs> DTG video is one about uh, starting a um, custom t-shirt business. Right. And it's about 12 minutes long. And uh, I think we've gotten 32,000, 33,000 views on it, and a lot of customers. Because someone is, someone is typing in, how to start a custom t-shirt business. Does Cafe Press or Zazzle have videos out there that promote their screen printing? Nope. Hmm. That's why on a lot of pages that you see Zazzle, like the custom Yorkie t-shirt thing, yeah. there's no videos. Hmm. So they do pictures, and they do, that's why I said, like, if in your market, if mm -hmm. there are no videos, then shoot one. Of just know, your products, you know, of what's available. Of absolutely. Yeah. Of, of anything. Yeah. Of anything. I mean, the videos that I do, I mean, some of them are really bad. You know, I'll just take my phone and I'll go and point at it. Heath, what are you doing? I'm washing the back of the DTG printer. Great. Let me see how you do that. Okay. Put it on YouTube. Washing a DTG printer. And I guarantee one day one of you will go, how do I clean this thing? Clean a DTG, DTG printer. And they'll be Heath. Right, and it'll be a, a ninety-second video, yeah. but it'll be at the on the first page. Yeah. 